Dear ones, what shall we do? We shall praise God who hears our prayers, who draws near to us, and brings new life out of death. Dear ones, how shall we live? With the confidence of God's beloved children, with the security and glory of our saving grace. Friends, old and new, what is the promise? New life, forgiveness of sin, the Spirit has given. Brothers and sisters, how shall we praise? We lift our voices and our hearts in love, thanks, and praise. We will praise the Lord as long as we live. Let us praise our risen Savior. Christ reaches out to us in unexpected ways as we travel. May 
May the word of our God continue to burn in our hearts. Amen. God for all the gifts you've given us and may we give to this ministry that lives will be changed in your holy name Amen Come on up kids Good morning How are you guys doing? Good. So I have a question for you Why do we come to church? <coughs> to worship God why do you come? Because your grandma brings you, right? <laughs> and and uh, what do we do while we're here worshiping God? <coughs> what do we do while we're here worshiping God? We say things. We say? Pray. 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 Praise God. What's that? Do work work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. <laughs> so we 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 read God's word, and 
as we said, we pray, we sing, we talk to each other, greet each other, say hello to each other, right? But God wants more than us coming here and just doing those things. He wants us to do those things. But there's a little bit more to it than that. In today's scripture in Isaiah, it says this. Learn to do what is right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. Do you know what that means? That means do good to other people. Love other people. And then if we do that, God will know we love him because we're loving other people. We're, doing, we're obedient to him. Can you remember that? So you've got to love other people, right? In special ways. Is there any way that, that you can think of that you could love somebody else? Maybe in school if someone doesn't know the answer, you could help them figure out how to get the answer in math, right? Or if somebody uh, forgot their lunch, maybe you could share your lunch. I know that's all able to do, but... <laughs> But uh, it's not allowed in schools anymore. But it used to be you'd share your lunch, right? Share things, right? Share your toys. That's how we love on other people. God wants us to love other people. And that way he knows we love him. Can you remember that? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to love other people so that you'll know that we love you too. Amen. You can go ahead and get your treats. joys and concerns for this church family. Uh, we need to keep Sue and Heather and Will and their entire family in prayer this week. It's good. It's been a difficult weekend and the week ahead is going to be a difficult week so let's remember to keep them in prayer and wrap our loving arms around them. Uh, also Renee's here visiting from Butler. It's good to see you Renee. Every, every so often she shows up, and that always brightens my day, so it's good to have you here. Are there others? Let's pray. Dearest Father, we come to you this day, we come out of love for you. We're here to worship you, to praise you, but not just in this place, when we leave this place, that we might be examples of who you have called us to be, that we might be doing exactly what you ask us to do, that we might be treating others with love and care and concern. And as we worship you this day, we worship you because you first loved us. We're grateful this day for the lessons that you teach us, for the family you've given us, for the hope that we have. And Father, as we come to this place, we come with joy. It's just the joy of being here. And I, I wasn't here last week, and so. I'm excited to be here. The joy of seeing everybody that I haven't seen for a couple weeks. And so I praise you for that. And Father, we also think of those people in need this day. And we lift those people to you. We think of the Merton family. And we ask that you would bring them comfort. As well as the Smeltzer family. Be with all of them. Give them comfort and hope. And that's the comfort and hope that only you can give. We also think of Sue and Heather and, and Will and, and uh, Nick, and we, we pray for them. Give them comfort this week. We pray for safe traveling mercies for as Sue drives out there. And, and uh, just be with them and bring them comfort. Give 
may your word bring them that comfort this day. We also lift Renee to you. We lift Adrian to you. We lift Mary to you. We lift Bill to you this day. Please, you, you know all their needs and the joy that Renee is here this day. We thank you for that. We're also grateful that Roy's surgery went well and, and now he can see better. And so we're grateful for that also. Father, there are so many blessings that you give us in this life. Some we see, but some we fail to see. Help us to take the time to see those little things, the, the small blessings that you give us. And, and we praise you for all of those. And as we come to this place, we come because of a great sacrifice. The sacrifice Jesus gave. He shed his blood that we might have life, eternal life. And we're so grateful. Because of that selfless sacrifice, we have hope. And so as we, we remember Jesus, we remember his words this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. children 
and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner, owner's man, manger, but Israel does not know my people, do not know. Let me try that again. But our Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted, from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. There is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burned with fire, your fields are being stripped by foreigners, bred before you, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. Daughter Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a cucumber field, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would not have become like, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. You, your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals. I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Run to do right and seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now. Let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is God's holy word. Thanks be to God. God. Now, as I looked at that scripture, I thought somebody could, could have written that down last week. That so applies to what we're living through today. Your country is desolate. Your cities burned with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners. As I hear on the news that China's buying a lot of our land. So it's taken over by foreigners. It's laid waste overthrown by strangers and then it dropped down a little bit it's like a city under siege and we think of all our cities all the violence and all the all the stuff that's going on in our cities today and then we go over to verse 12 and it says the trampling of my courts and as we see there's not much justice in our court system anymore and so then it says, learn to do what is right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widows. And what that is is the answer. That's the solution to everything that I read before, all the things that are wrong in this country and in the world today. God just doesn't point out those things. He also gives us a solution, doesn't he? He doesn't leave us helpless as, as people who have no hope, because he also gives us a solution. 
And as Isaiah was given a glimpse of what life would look like for the children of Israel, he foresaw the coming of Jesus. He also foresaw Jesus' ministry, and Isaiah described the blessings of God's people that they would receive someday, that good things were in store for God's people. He was told that he would spend his life, this is how it goes, speaking to people who would hear but not listen. And I bet sometimes with your kids you felt that way. They heard me, but they're not listening. And that's exactly how God feels also. And then Isaiah, he was speaking to people who would see, but never understand. And yet Isaiah was faithful, not for two, not three years, but for 50 years, Isaiah was faithful to God. But Judah did not heed the warnings of Isaiah. Jerusalem did not heed the warnings of Isaiah. And now we hear Isaiah's words. Thousands of years have passed. And the words that we read today, those words written, still speak to us, don't they? That's how God's word is. It speaks to us. It's never outdated. It's never so yesterday's news. It always matters. It always applies to us. God's word, it's relevant today. They are the words that help us to know God, to know who he is, to learn his great wisdom, to learn how much God loves us. All we need to do is go through the pages of his words. And over and over again, we see things done on our behalf because he loves us that much. And I have often said that one call can change your life. And I think most of us know that that's true. Can change our lives forever. But this is one call that definitely will change your life forever. It's God's call. It's God's call here. And when he calls, how would you respond to him? Now, Billy Sunday was an evangelist. And he traveled doing, doing uh, his evangelistic work. And he was planning on going to a large city. And he was concerned for the people in that city, those souls. And so he thought, if only I had some names to pray for before I get there. So he sent a uh, letter to the mayor of the city. And he said, could you give me some names of people who need Jesus? And in the mail that week, Billy Sunday received the telephone book. <laughs> You see, the mayor understood that everyone needs Jesus. We all need Jesus. Now, I love caller ID because when a telemarketer calls, I don't have to answer. Or if somebody I don't want to talk to calls, I don't have to answer. And now you're all sitting there thinking, the last time I called, I don't have to answer. <laughs> Did she, was she there? And did that talk to me? But my point is this, folks. When God calls, it is the one call that you will want to answer. It's the one call that you will need to answer. The invitation that Isaiah proclaimed in today's scripture is the same invitation that we have today. Let's look at verse 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. First thing we see, we see that God says, come. God wants us to come to him. God has invited us to come to him since man was created. Since he created man, he's wanted the love of his people, his chosen people. God invited man, through, he does through his word, but way back then, through Noah. Noah preached for over a hundred years while people were laughing at him and making fun of him as he built this boat. But Noah called fallen mankind to repent and turn, come to God. God invited man through Isaiah as in today's scripture. 
God invited man to John the Baptist when John called for man to repent. And through Jesus, Jesus invited men. He said, come, follow me. Today's invitation is come. Come to the Lord. In verse 18 again, come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Not just come, but what's he saying? Come now. God wants us to come now. Answer the invitation right now. Make a decision right now. Why? Why can't we procrastinate? Well, if we look in Proverbs, it says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Scripture tells us tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Scripture tells us life is uncertain. Today might be the last time that you have to answer the come now. And in 2 Corinthians, it says, For God says, In the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So when he says come, he means come right now. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Because you don't know what tomorrow brings. You have right now. That's all any of us are promised. That's all any of us have. Now, John Wesley, he used to go from service to service on a horse. He'd ride horseback to the different churches. And one day, a thief jumped out in front of his horse and stopped him. And he said, give me all your money. And so John got off the horse, and he reached in his pocket, and he had a few coins. He didn't have much. And then he invited the stranger to go ahead and look through the saddlebags, but all that was there were books, and so the thief was kind of upset. He was kind of angry with John as he started to leave. And John said, wait, I have one more thing to give you. He said, it's the precious blood of Jesus, because that's the only thing that can save you. And it was several years later, John was preaching at a service, when the service ended, a man came up. Somebody said, there's a guy here who wants to talk to you. And as soon as John looked at him, he knew who it was. It was that thief. And he said, I want to tell you, I'm a successful businessman now. I'm a Christian. I gave my life to Christ. And I owe it all to you. And John looked at him and said, you owe me nothing. You owe Jesus for the precious blood that he gave you. For your salvation. Let's look at verses 2 and 4. Hear me, you heavens. Listen, earth. For the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's manager. But Israel does not know my people nor and do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. You see, God extends an invitation this day to come, but not just to come, come now. And He'll give you that salvation to all who respond. God extends that invitation to all who respond. The question is, who does God invite? When we look at, at verse 4, he invites the sinful, the guilty, the evildoers, the corrupt, those who have forsaken him, those who have turned their backs on him. And he invites us. The invitation was extended and is extended to anyone who responds. You see, we're no different than Israel, are we? We have rebelled against our Creator. We have given very little thought to God and the things of God. We trivialize our sin to where it's not, we're not so bad, are we? We think that. We have a sin problem. We have dirty hands. We have a dirty heart. 
And the only cure is the blood of Jesus the Christ. He shed that for each of us. Jesus is the only hope we have. Now, Kurt Warner talked about his life before Christ, and he said, I lived life my way. Didn't matter what God wanted, it was what I wanted, what mattered to me. It was all about me. But then at 25, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and then it didn't matter about me anymore. It was about what God wanted. You see, my life changed, he said, because I desired the things of God. It mattered what God wanted. Let's look at verse 18 again. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. The, Lord. the invitation God extends is an invitation to come. To all who respond. It's an invitation to be forgiven for those times you sinned against God, you sinned against God other people because the fact is when you sin it's always against God you might think it's against somebody you're getting even with somebody but when you sin you sin against God and God alone and you see God isn't compromising your sin God is offering a pardon from judgment to those who turn from their sin to those who repent turn from your sin God isn't des denying our sinfulness, is he? Instead, he offers forgiveness based on the payment made by Jesus Christ. And you see, when Jesus died on that cross, all the sins that I've ever committed were after he died on the cross. So he went before I committed any sins. So he died for my past sins, but also for my future sins as well. God is saying, if you come to me, if you repent, if you obey me, my son will pay for all of your sins. That's a real good deal, folks. You won't get a better offer anywhere. He did all the work and we reap all the benefits. Come, let us reason together. That's pretty reasonable, I would say. He will reason with us that we are all sinners. He will reason with us about the penalty of sin. He will reason with us that our sins can be forgiven. And he will reason with us about our hopeless condition that all of us have. God wants us to see what our lives look like to him. That's what he's telling us this day. There isn't a number of which God will stop forgiving us. It doesn't say you can sin this many times. You think all the red lines are government sets? God does not set that red line. He's willing to forgive whatever when we repent, when we ask for forgiveness. You see, there is no sin so bad that God will not forgive it when asked for forgiveness and repentance. There's not any. Even if our sins are scarlet, even if our sins are red as crimson, Jesus will make you white as snow, as clean as washed wool, as clean as bleached wool. That's what the blood of Jesus has done for each and every one of us. Jesus offers us a new way of life. He offers us a new life. He offers us a changed life. He offers us an eternal life. If you accept the invitation now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we don't know about tomorrow. So if there's just one here that says, I'll, I'll wait a while, don't do it. Convict them this day. Because you're in the business of, of convicting us and forgiving us and making us white as snow. Not through anything we've done, but what Jesus has done. We're so grateful this day for that sacrifice. We are grateful that you reach out to us. It's never the other way around. You're always reaching out to us, saying, come to me, come now. Come and change. Come and be like me. Come and have hope. 
We're so grateful this day for what you offer us. And all we have to do in return is come. Ask Christ as our Savior to change us, to mold us. It's you who changes us. And we're so grateful. Heavenly Father, empower us this day to do your will and your work when we leave this place. To be your grateful people, knowing that we owe it all to Jesus. Everything we are, everything we have, comes from heaven. And so we're so grateful this day. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And we thank you. Amen. At this time, I would ask the ushers to please come forward and uncover the elements. Not the ushers, the elders. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men will come from east and west and from north and south to sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Are you hungry today? I mean spiritually hungry. Because that's what's offered here today. If you're hungry physically, I'll see you at traditions after worship. But right now, if you're spiritually hungry... Let us share the meal which Jesus has prepared for us. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. He said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat. And then when he said, then remember, remember what I've done for you. In the same way, he took the cup. He said, this cup is a sign of the new covenant sealed my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, he's saying, remember the sacrifice. Remember what I've done for you. Remember what I can do for you. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. And the good part, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. On the night of his arrest, Jesus said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me.
Jesus took the cup. He said, this is my blood given for you. Drink in remembrance of me. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the elders, please cover the elements.